Hey everyone, it's Steven. Today I have the 2023 Ford Bronco Wild Track. Ford reintroduced the Bronco nameplate after 25 years off the market back in 2021 with the new sixth generation Bronco, and I've got the 2023 model here. So as expected from an off-road oriented truck like this, you do have a huge amount of configurations and options that you can go through. You can get a two-door or a four-door version, softer hardtop, plastic or steel bumper, and you know you can make it more luxurious oriented or more off-roading oriented. There's a whole host of different things and the price range really can go from anything closer to $30,000 all the way up to like seventy dollars or $80,000. To quote Ford, the wild track trim here is specifically meant for high speed off-roading. So it does come with the 2.7 liter engine, the more powerful twin turbo V6. And it also comes with some more suspension system updates to make it more suitable for some intense off-roading. The biggest competitor for this vehicle is going to be obviously the Jeep Wrangler, the Rubicon trim specifically, which does undercut this vehicle by quite a few thousand dollars. To a lesser extent, you've also got the Land Rover Defender and the G-Wagon, but those are definitely going to be much more expensive and luxury oriented whereas the Bronco really its true competitor is obviously that wildly popular Jeep Wrangler that you see everywhere. Another cool part about the Wild Track trim is that it comes standard with the Sasquatch package. That is actually an option, a very expensive option on lower Broncos, but for the Wild Track trim, it comes standard, gives you the huge 35 inch tires on the 17 inch wheels, beadlock capable, and you've also got a different suspension setup like I mentioned before. For the 2023 model year though, you've got a new setup with Fox shocks, making this a lot more powerful and much better for off-roading. So the Bronco Wild Track I have here is actually a Canadian spec because I'm in Calgary right now. Um, so I'm going to be giving the Canadian prices, but I will put the US conversions below. Um, the one I have here, MSRP is for almost $70,000 for the Wild Track trim, just below $70,000 Canadian dollars. And as tested, this one comes to $80,000. Note though that Ford has updated the pricing of the Bronco over the past year or so. So this is actually more expensive now. I think this comes up to almost $85,000 now as tested. So as I mentioned before, the Bronco Wild Track comes with the 2.7 liter twin turbo V6, makes 330 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque with premium gas though. If you get regular octane gas, it's actually a little lower, but I don't think anyone's really going to notice the difference. This burly engine gives you 0 to 60 times of just about 6 seconds, which is quite fast for this huge off-roading truck. This is mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission with standard four-wheel drive across the entire lineup, as you would expect from an off-roading oriented truck. And that gives you fuel economy numbers of about 14.1 liters per 100 kilometers. I'll put the US conversions down below. Pretty standard, very similar to the Jeep Wrangler Twin. All right, let's look at the exterior of this gorgeous Bronco. I am obsessed with both the color of this, which is called Cactus Gray. I love it. It's kind of like a shade of off-white blue. It's, it's a really cool color, and it changes colors really based on the lighting. When it's really sunny, like today, you've got this really nice, like, off-gray kind of cerulean blue. But on other days, it kind of looks almost green. Very, very cool color. If you look at the configuration options on Ford's website, the, uh, the different colors look so great on this Bronco. Ford has done such a good job with the paint jobs on this. The front is going to really depend on what options you get. On the Wild Track, you have a few different options. This grill right here, this bumper, is called the Heavy Duty Modular Bumper. What that means is that you can actually unscrew all these different little uh, screws right here and put in different modifications. You can put a bar in front, you can add winches, whatever you really want, but that gives us a lot more capability for some more intense off-roading. At the front, you also do have the Wild Track graphic on top of the hood, which is pretty cool. Neat touch that differentiates this between the normal base Bronco, which is about half the price of this crazy Wild Track trim. I also love what Ford did with the daytime running lights here. Full LEDs in the front, and I love how the turn signals are just the, uh, you know, that little bar in the middle. It looks so cool, and it's such a classic look that I feel like they really modernized with the current generation of the Bronco. I love this look. The front just looks generally good. You've got that honeycomb design on the grille, and then you've also got the Bronco lettering spelled out in white. Some trims get that blacked out. Really, there's a ton of different options, of course. This front can look so different, and I think that's what a lot of people like about the Bronco and the Wrangler is just the amount of customization you can do. Moving along the side profile of this vehicle, you've got these larger fender, plastic fender flares. This is actually part of the wild track trim, so it's a little wider than the normal Bronco. And then look at these huge tires, 35 inch tires wrapped around 17 inch wheels. You've got beadlock capable wheels. These are a little dirty right now because we have had some pretty crazy rain here, but um, you know, they look 
pretty good. They're blacked out, so it does give this vehicle a bit more of an imposing look. You've also got some nice running boards here. This is standard for the wild track trim. The running boards actually do say Bronco on them. Pretty neat touch. Um, you know, it's an interesting thing because this vehicle is high enough where you do want to use the running board, but when I'm on it, it's like a little too high. So I don't know. They aren't power retractable, unfortunately. Um, the Wrangler gives you the option of a power retractable running board, which is pretty neat. Otherwise, the side profile, pretty normal boxy look, right? You'll notice the soft top on the, this model. This is the base soft cloth top and uh, it's pretty loud, but we'll talk about that a little later when we get into the interior. It looks fine. You'll notice that the last window is not really a window, it's just part of the soft top, which is fully removable, as expected from an off-roading oriented vehicle like this. Going into the rear here, you've got the tail lights. I love these tail lights as well. Ford just did such a good job with the redesign of this Bronco, keeping it looking really modern. You've also got a huge spare tire in the back. This is a full-size tire, 35 inch tire, 17 inch wheels, just like the other setup in the uh, normal wheels. You've got the Ford logo at the bottom. This is probably the only place that actually shows you that this is a Ford. Ford really wants you to know that this is a Bronco and not just your normal Ford vehicle. I think Ford does a pretty good job of that in general with their lineup. You'll also notice that this is not actually a real windshield. So you don't have any rear windshield wipers. If this gets dirty, you're gonna to have to manually clean that. And now going into the trunk here, you do have a, a wide swinging trunk, goes to 150 degrees here. And you've got 35.6 cubic feet of cargo space in here. With the second row, you get 77.6 cubic feet of cargo space, way better than the competitors. This is actually much more space than the Jeep Wrangler offers. So if you want some more space, this is definitely the vehicle to get. Also just in general, if you want the better looking one and the nicer one, I think the Bronco is definitely the one to get. Though the Wrangler is getting refreshed for 2024. So that one looks really nice. Another interesting thing to note is that with the soft top option, you can't really move this while you're putting things in. So if you're loading things, you have to kind of slide it in. If they're tall, they can definitely fit up here. It's just that you can't really put it in easily. So one thing to note if you're going to get the soft top. Now to round out the exterior, you'll notice that you have that Bronco logo in the back. Pretty cool. I like how it doesn't really say Bronco, it just shows you the logo. And finally, let's listen to that exhaust. You've got one exhaust tip coming out at the bottom there, so definitely doesn't look as cool as some of the other trucks with like the G-Wagon where it comes out on the sides. But I will say that this twin turbo V6 makes really good sounds and you can really hear it with that soft top, right? <laughs> I will also mention that the soft top does rattle quite a bit, so definitely not going to be the quietest ride. I'll talk about that a little later in the review, but for now, let's take a listen to the exhaust notes. <laughs> I did also want to show you guys what the exhaust sounds like inside. You get a really nice sound because of the soft top. So there are some pros of having the soft top, I guess, even if it is really loud inside the cabin. So it only does let you rev it to 4,000 RPM, unfortunately. But like, you can hear the twin turbo pretty well. When you're accelerating onto the freeway here, it sounds good. All right, now let's take a look at the interior of the 2023 Ford Bronco Wild Track. Love this cactus gray and this light here. It looks phenomenal in pretty much any type of lighting. Really bright, strong daylight and an overcast day like today. Let's check out these gorgeous mountains. I'm in Banff National Park right now and it is just so pretty. This Bronco is definitely the vehicle to have when you're in, an, uh, in a mountainous adventure like this. I love the way it's so easy to open up the soft top. Okay, so let's go in right here. This is actually not a button, which is kind of interesting. This is actually just a, it's just a imprint that you can just kind of slide your finger over to lock the car. And it does have a proximity keyless entry as expected from a vehicle at this price point. And going in, you got a really good look here because of course I have lowered the windows and opened up the retractable soft top as well. Let's take a look at the key fob really quickly. It says Bronco doesn't say Ford it says Bronco kind of wish it just had a picture of the Bronco or something like that. It'd be kind of cool. Let's get inside this 2023 Bronco and check out this cool startup animation. I think this is awesome. I love the uh, high FPS of this. Looks very, very good, very high tech. All right, so you've got to push the start button as expected. And uh, I think this cabin looks quite good. All right, to zoom out a little bit, it's actually getting quite chilly here, but um, you've got a pretty good cabin. So, you know, the first thing you'll probably notice is 
the high luxurious feel of this cabin, right? This is not just the base Bronco. This car is quite expensive and it, it does look a bit more like that part, right? You've got some nice uh, leather textures around the actual cabin and you can see this two-tone color. The sandstone is a very popular look. I think it looks pretty good. I think most people will be pretty happy with it. You've got sandstone leather, you've got the vinyl um, black as well, and you've got the Bronco lettering spelled out right there. It looks very cool, very tough. The entire cabin is meant to be able to be washed um, in the event that, you know, you're taking this off-roading, it gets dirty, things like that. Um, and it just, it looks really good, actually, and it's quite comfortable as well. And everything is very usable. Everything is set up pretty easily. You've got nice physical buttons for everything. Overall impression when I first got in this vehicle was pretty impressed, looks good, very functional, but pretty much about what I was expecting. It is a pretty pricey vehicle, though, you have to remember that. So let's talk about this screen first. This is going to be your 12 inch infotainment system running Sync 4. So this is Ford's newest infotainment system. I've covered this in a number of other reviews. Now I'll link them here, um, but it's a pretty good system. I do like it. It's easy to figure out where things are. I will say it's a little weird why some things are listed as features and some things are listed as settings, vehicle settings, things like that. I don't really understand the difference between some of this stuff, but it is pretty easy to find. Definitely better than some of the German competitors um, going into audio, you've got, you know, pretty crisp graphics, right? Everything looks like it's running pretty smoothly. Um, you do have this little interesting sidebar, which I always hate um, when vehicles do this. Even if it looks good, right? Like, this looks really, really good. And it's smooth, it's easy, but, like, at the end of the day, I just want Apple CarPlay to take the entire thing. Um, I do really like this pitch and roll thing. I've been kind of sticking it on this one and having CarPlay on the main screen. But, yeah, I just hate that you can't expand it. It just really should stretch to the entire list, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Apple CarPlay looks good, graphics are easy, crisp, and navigation is easy. Got some good navigation here. The map, the built-in navigation is actually quite impressive. Like, Ford has definitely done some good work on <laughs> spending their R&D money on this infotainment system because it looks really good. It's really easy to use, too. But okay, of course, CarPlay is really where <laughs> things are going to be. Um, I do want to note that I really like these cool blue touches all over the cabin, right? You've got it on the vents, and you'll notice that at night, everything is blue. There is actual ambient lighting, quote, quote, um, which is really just footwell lighting, but it is blue. It looks nice. You also got this grab handle for the passenger here, which is blue. And uh, yeah, just blue touches everywhere. Um, I think that's, it, it's always a neat thing that Ford does, and I do wish you could kind of change the color of it, but you know, it's Ford. <laughs> it makes sense. You do have a number of buttons here in the center st stack right here that look pretty good. You've got a 360 camera. This comes with the uh, high package, that's what it's called. You've got the mid package, which actually comes standard on the wall track. You've got the luxe package, and then you've got the high package. That one comes with 360 camera, adaptive cruise control, your Bang & Olufsen sound system, adapt uh, and yeah, just all the goodies that you really want. Um, no heads up display though, but wouldn't really expect for a vehicle like this to have that. But yeah, 360 camera looks really good, easy to use. Um, and I like that there's a physical button for it. It makes it easy. You've got auto stop start right here. Easy to turn off and on, though I will say it doesn't remember your last setting, which really bothers me because you have to turn it off every single time. You've got uh, your parking sensors so you can turn off and on. And yeah, just everything you would expect from a more expensive vehicle at this price point, right? You've got a really nice, easy physical climate control thing right here, which uh, I just miss those in other vehicles. Um, and you've got a heated steering wheel, three-way heated uh, seats as well. So no ventilated seats, unfortunately, but you pretty much have everything you need here. Moving on down, you've got your wireless charging pad. Works pretty well. Um, doesn't get overheated because it's kind of out of the sun, which is nice. You've got a USB-C and USB-A outlet there. You do have your gear select right here, which is really nice. You've got a bucking Bronco on that as well, and you can actually use this to kind of change your gear when you're in uh, manual mode. You've got your different drive modes right there. Um, this is going to be called GOAT modes, go over all terrain. That is what Ford really markets with their Bronco, is the ability for you to pretty much go over any terrain here. So this actually shows in the infotainment system here, but if you change, um, you can see that you have some really cool graphics here. I actually really love the graphics there, but basically you can use this dial at the bottom to change your drive modes. They have so many different things, it's kind of crazy. And then on top of the GOAT modes, you've got your uh, transfer case stuff. So you can essentially have four auto, which is really nice. You basically just set it in there and don't have to think about it. Um, and then you've also got two high, four low, and four high as expected from a four wheel drive vehicle like this. All your window switches are in the middle, classic. You can kind of move them up right now. They're all automatic, one touch automatic, which is really nice. 
got your child lock and you can adjust windows here. Kind of confusing when you first get in the car and you're trying to figure out how to adjust your windows and <laughs> uh, none of the settings are actually on the door panels themselves. You'll notice actually there are no memory uh, seats, unfortunately, which is kind of a bummer at this price point because I just kind of would expect there to be some sort of memory here, at least two-way memory for the driver. All right, let's talk more about the door panel. So again, you have that sandstone vinyl contrast there. And I do like this cool little aluminum brushed uh, texture here as well. And you'll notice you have a little net for your water bottle at the bottom, which actually looks really, really good. And it functions very nicely as well because it's expandable. You can kind of put a variety of different things in there. So I do like the storage. Notice on both the driver and the passenger side here, you actually have this cool grab bar. So this is actually what you're supposed to use to get in the vehicle because it's obviously a very high up vehicle. Um, you'll probably notice that the, on the outside you do have some running boards and uh, those aren't power unfortunately or anything like that. I don't think you can even get those, but they function pretty well. The Bronco does have a quite a ri high ride height. You've got 11.5 inches of ground clearance so definitely a pretty high up vehicle um, a lot of the garages that i was looking at here are six foot six and my bronco barely makes it underneath that going up here obviously you've got the retractable roof which looks really really excellent i love the open air experience here it feels really really good and i mean just really speaks to that bronco off-roading name right like i think this is really what a lot of people want when they're uh hey uh, when they're uh trying to decide what vehicle to get especially for off-roading right when you want to contemplate a bronco or a wrangler you want that open air experience unfortunately the bronco retractable roof they don't they have so many different options for the roof but they don't have a power retractable one which is kind of a bummer you always have to do this manually which means if you want to uh, retract the roof at a stop or something like that you actually have to literally manually lift it back which i don't think most people are going to do so unfortunately you basically have to actually be stopped somewhere to actually do that all right, let's talk about this uh, half digital gauge cluster right here. So this one right here is actually going to be an eight inch LCD cluster. They've kind of used this for a long time in some of their vehicles. You've got your digital speedometer or you've got your analog speedometer on the side, but you do have a digital number for it too. You don't have an actual tachometer. You've just got the RPM gauge right there. You can change the right hand side based on your steering wheel to kind of show a few different things. Um, it's nothing too exciting. I personally didn't really like that you couldn't show too much stuff here. The music is fine for me, I guess. Um, and then you've got your range on the left-hand side, and this is going to show your adaptive cruise control abilities. So you can you know, configure how far away you wanna be from the next car, uh, lane keep assist, things like that are all shown in here. All right, it looks like it's gonna rain at any second now, so I'm gonna kind of wrap this up. So the steering wheel here feels really good. I do like the steering wheel a lot. It is definitely leather, feels really nice to the touch, really easy to move around, which is kind of different from a lot of these larger, bulkier vehicles. Sometimes they feel kind of hard to move around. This steering wheel's pretty light, um, definitely not as light as some of those SUVs you find these days, but um, I, I really love the feel of these buttons on both the left and right hand side. They're this really nice, like easy to press and like, I don't know, it just feels really good. Um, you've got your volume control on the left hand side, you've got skip track on the right. A little hard to get used to sometimes, but I really love this steering wheel. I think it's really easy to use, functional, and I just love how, I love how the buttons feel. They just feel great. The tactile response is fantastic. All right, let's talk about the seats before I go into the rear seats here. So these seats, I, I really like them. Notice the blue contrast stitching on it. I feel like it's really hard to see sometimes in certain lights, but I really like that. You've got the Bronco logo as well on both of the front seats. And, um, you know, you've just got that traditional classic texture that I mentioned before of the sandstone leather. Um, and I just, I think it looks nice. Uh, you'll notice these aren't bolstered super well compared to at least more of the sporty vehicles. And I did want to show you guys on top of the dash here, you've got, of course, your buttons for locking your front and rear axles, as expected from uh, an off-roading master like the Bronco Wild Track wants to be. Um, and you do have your normal traction control off and uh, hazard lights there as well. I did also want to show you guys the Bang & Olufsen speaker cap right there, which looks fine. It could be a little fancier. All right, let's go into the second row of the Bronco now. So, I mean, this vehicle competes with things like the Jeep Wrangler, the G-Wagon to a certain extent, Land Rover Defender. Um, so you can't really compare it to like a mid-size SUV or a compact SUV. The size of it in terms of length is definitely similar to a compact SUV, but of course you've got decent leg room here. You will notice though that you have a really high ride height and like these seats just don't feel long enough, you know, for like giving your thighs support, I feel. So it's definitely not the most comfortable thing for adults in the rear seats here, but it's fine, you've got that same nice look at least. And I love the Bronco on the floor there, really nice touch. You do have some charging ports here, USB-C and USB-A. You've got an AC ad adapter outlet as well here. 
You can uh, open the windows with these. These are also one touch, which is really nice. Notice the no step here thing. It's like, please don't step on this. But yeah, otherwise the rear seats are nice. You've got that same netting as well on the door panels and I just think it's a really great look. One thing to notice though is that the Bang & Olufsen sound system doesn't have anything on the door panels. That's because they're meant to be removable, right? So at the end of the day, like everything in this car is kind of built to function like these trucks function, right? Definitely not going to be as similar to an SUV as you would expect. You do have your nice, uh, you know, armrest slash cup holder thing here though as well. And you can access things in the trunk, which is always a nice thing in case you need to grab anything from back there. Um, but yeah, this retractable roof does go all the way over the second row. So you do have a ton of space for you to feel like you're in an open air vehicle. All right, so what is the 2023 Bronco Wild Track like to drive? So again, keep in mind that the Wild Track trim specifically is meant for high speed off roading. Kind of weird because I feel like the Raptor kind of does the exact same thing if you think about it. But um, I do want to mention that this Wild Track trim does give you that 2.7 liter tur twin turbo V6, right? Um, and that is definitely no slouch. Like that is an impressive engine. Like it gets you up to speed pretty quick, right? Zero to 60 in about six seconds. And I mean, it's quite fast. I'm in a parking lot, so I'm not gonna rev it too hard. But if I go into sport here, always love these animations. You kind of rev it hard here. You can definitely hear <laughs> that engine. That's a twin turbo, right? So definitely not gonna sound as good as a V8, obviously, but sounds way better than a lot of the non-Rubicon Wranglers, right? So I don't know. Personally, I like the sound of this car a lot more than the Wrangler, um, but you know, again, the Raptor is obviously gonna be a lot more uh, crazy. <laughs> and same with the Rubicon 392. But um, in terms of this, comparing it to the actual Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, this wins in terms of engine sound, in terms of just general luxury aesthetic. And I don't know, and just, I, I think I think it wins in every category, honestly. There's nothing that I like more about the Wrangler than the Bronco. I will say the lack of the power retractable roof thing is kind of weird. That is something that, you know, the Wrangler has had for quite a while now. So I'm just surprised that Ford introduced the Bronco without putting that in, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just love the sound of this engine. Like even, and like, <laughs> because of the soft top option and how crazy the sound leakage is in here, um, you can hear the engine very, very, very well. So you don't even have to be going that fast. Um, okay, so one thing, some of the negatives about this car, you might've already noticed, um, the, the sound isolation is just obviously not there. You don't really get this car for the luxury experience though. So I don't think most people would be expecting that but um it is it's just loud it's just one of those things where like that's that's the best that's the only way i can put it right it's just a loud car um it's never going to feel that quiet um unless you get the optional hard top that has sound editing in it which is actually a really cool option but for this vehicle on the base with the normal soft top it's just loud it feels like something's always open in the back of the car which i mean to be fair it kind of is right you don't really have a trunk you don't have really that same sealage that you would get in uh you know a different vehicle that actually has a normal trunk and isn't built for an off-roading open air experience but i will say honestly at freeway speeds it's quieter than i expected just knowing how loud the wrangler can be this car was actually quieter than i first expected but it's still loud <laughs> so don't buy this car if you're expecting that um you know this car really is meant for those off-roading enthusiasts this car will do so well with its goat modes and you know just use it for what it's meant for and i think it'll never cease to put a smile on your face it's easy to drive this car i will say that's one of those things where like a lot of people who are hesitant to drive larger cars like this are kind of scared about um this car is easy to drive it feels very similar to an SUV. And I think that's what happens with a lot of these trucks these days is that they're getting more to that SUV experience and that's why they're selling so well, right? People love this if it's easy to drive. If it becomes more difficult and can really only be for those off-roading enthusiasts, I feel like this car would, wouldn't sell like 80% of the units that it does sell, right? Most people who buy this car don't ever take it off-roading, which is really, really sad um, when it's such a great off-roader. But at the end of the day, if you just want a car that takes you to point A to point B, uh, there are obviously more fuel efficient cars. There are obviously cheaper cars, um, but none have that same presence that the Bronco has. And I love the looks. I think Ford did such a good job with all of that. The infotainment system is fantastic. 
Um, the sound system is actually quite impressive as well. Just overall, this is just a really good cabin um, as expected for Ford bringing back such an iconic nameplate after so many years, right? So I'm really glad they did that. Um, and I think anyone who drives this will be happy with it. Um, you know, you have so many different trim options to choose from. You know, what bumper do you want to choose? What sort of uh, top do you want to use? Uh, what, how much do you want to off-road, right? Like all of that sort of stuff can be cu customized to your liking, which is kind of cool. And I think that's definitely uh, an appeal of these vehicles. But yeah, overall, I really liked it. I hope you guys like it too. Um, if you want to check out some of my other reviews, you can click up here. Please subscribe down here as well. And I'll see you guys in the next review. Thanks everyone, bye.